Two weeks. Excuse me? Uh, two weeks. Two, two wire weeks. intercom system. Uh, two wire. Remember to like and subscribe. Hey, how's it going? This is Jay with Kinetic, and today we're talking about industry standard two wire intercom systems. This video is included in a series of videos on intercoms, including ClearCom HelixNet digital wired intercoms, ClearCom FreeSpeak wireless intercom systems, and ClearCom Agent IC IP intercom systems. You can click the link above to kind of see any of those. But this video, we're talking about two wire intercom systems, or TW. Two weeks. Excuse me? Uh, two weeks. Two, two wire weeks. intercom system. <laughs> two wire. So, in terms of an intercom system, what does two wire actually mean? It's because the circuit is encompassed of two wires. Wire one is power and wire 2 is the transmission for the duplex audio. In the entertainment world we typically see a two wire system using an XLR connection. The two most common types of two wire ports and connections you're going to see are going to be ClearCom and RTS. The differences between the two systems are how duplex audio is carried. On ClearCom duplex audio or we'll call this channel A is carried across pin number 3. In RTS, channel A is carried across pin 2, which is also the power line. Duplex audio 2, or channel B, by default on an RTS circuit is carried across pin number 3. In order to get a clear comm line to carry duplex audio 2 down its power line, you need what's called a TWC, which is a two-wire combiner. ClearCom and RTS systems are both full duplex systems. Well, you may have never heard the word duplex before. What does duplex mean? Well, in order for me to explain to you what a full duplex system is, I'm going to use an example that everybody's familiar with. A half duplex system, radios. Base camp to main stage, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, this is main stage, what's going on? Uh, main stage, can you hear me? Uh, over. Yeah, I can hear you. Let go of the button, and then you can hear me. Uh, main stage, can you hear me? Uh, over. Yeah, I can hear you. Let go of the button, and then you can Is hear anybody me. anybody at the main stage? Hello? Oh, I'm, I'm holding the dead Yes, button. yes, we are here. We're, can somebody tell them we're here? We all heard you, main stage. Thank you. Intercom systems are full duplex, meaning anybody can speak and listen simultaneously. That's also why they're typically called party lines, because everybody can talk and everybody can listen. Now, let's talk voltage. Voltage, yeah! So, typically, the two wire systems you're going to work with, again, are carried down an XLR line. And those who are ill-informed may think that they could simply plug that into a preamp on a console or any other microphone preamp type of XLR connection. Well. Standard RTS and ClearCom two-wire systems are at 27 to 29 volts, and a typical preamp tops out at 24 volts. So you want to be conscious of that. That's also why if you look at camera chains and CCU triac systems, they have a RTS or ClearCom circuit on there to run COM down the line, and those COM circuits are typically built to handle that increase in voltage. Again, two-wire systems run 27 to 29 volts, and a typical microphone preamp tops out at 24 volts. Next, I want to break down a two-wire system for you, including the base station and its components. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a ClearCom 700 series Encore system, which the principles we're going to discuss are the same as the 500 series, the 600 series. They're, they're all really similar with a couple different changes at the base station and belt pack level, but the principles are identical. And everything that we talk about here can also be translated into RTS as well. Alright, so looking at the front of the base station, just in case you guys want to jump around in this video, I want to show you the really pertinent stuff first, and then I'm going to walk you through the entire panel. So, something I see happen all the time, people are just ignorant to the topic, the talk buttons that's either on a belt pack or the base station, doesn't matter. If I press and hold a button, it's momentary. 
But if I tap it, that channel is now latched open. Same thing with the belt packs. If I press and hold talk, it's momentary. When I release it, the channel is shut off. If I tap it, I'm now latched on. Another cool button on here is remote mic kill. So say, say uh, this guy is talking and he leaves his comm on and now we all have to hear his side conversation. If you hit remote mic kill, shuts that off. And it does it down the line. So if both of these guys leave it latched and, and you know they're not talking to you and you know it's an accident, you can just shut that off real quick. There's 500 series, 600 series, uh, ClearCom systems and RTS 2R systems. Almost all of the terminology and functions are very similar. So I'm gonna walk you through the front. I'm gonna let you know what these things mean and what they do and give you all the pertinent shit. So from left to right, first thing we see, we have a panel mic or a headset switch. That's because wherever this base station is located, um, they can have just a mic if it's on a wall in a theater or a full headset if this is a producer or a TD. Typically, I give the main stations to people that need more functions, such as technical directors, etc. Moving down the line, we have announce. Now, on the back of all of these main stations, you have a single line level input for program, and you have a line level output, which is your stage announce. When I press this button here, whoever is attached to this main station, either with a panel mic or a headset, their voice is now sent out of that stage announce on the back, and I'll show you the back view here in a minute. Party line link A and B, and we'll go into greater detail of this in a little bit. At the time I recorded this, I couldn't think of a good example for party line link, but now that I'm editing, I can. So, say channel A is set up for all the production staff, everybody's on there, it's a big party line, and channel B is isolated for your camera staff. Maybe you're going through rehearsals and the client wants to talk to everybody. If you press the party line link, now you can. Moving down the line, remember I told you on the back there's a program input? Well, we have an interrupt. An interrupt on channel A. So that means I'm sending program down the line. I have our program level kind of set here. For I'm sorry, program level is set right here. And program level is going down the line, right? When I press this button and talk, it now cuts the program feed as an interrupt and everybody can hear somebody speaking. And that can happen from here, that can happen anywhere down channel A if this is set to on. So we can have program level on, we can have program off, or we can have program set to the interrupt here. I usually leave it set to interrupt, that's just because you don't have to dick with it. If somebody, if you're, if nobody's talking, you hear program. If somebody talks on that channel, program is interrupted. Now we have the volumes for channel A and channel B for the person with this headset on. Then we have our side tones. Now, if you've never heard the word side tone before, that is essentially your own voice in your own head when you're speaking. That's a good indicator to you that you're indeed live and everything is working the way it should. Next, we have call buttons for channel A and channel B. Because I'm using 701s, I only have channel A on them, and I'll go into that in a little bit more. But if I press the call button, you're gonna see these guys light up. I'm holding this down. And if they press the call button, mine will light up too. So anybody familiar with tally lights or any sort of broadcast lights like that will be familiar with call buttons. That's more or less if somebody doesn't have their headset on or they're doing something else and they look down and they see the light, that's a great visual indicator of, hey, someone's trying to call me, I need to pay attention to that. Now, on channel B, we have side tone again, and again, that's your own voice in your head. We have the same on, off, interrupt functions for the program feed on channel B. Then we have tone, alert, and remote mic kill once again. And we'll show you guys this guy, he, he's talking, he left his channel latched because he didn't hold it and let go, he just tapped it. So if you hear it and you know that he didn't mean to leave it open, you can just shut that guy off. And then we have the speaker, which is right here, which we can have on or off. Typically in a live event situation, we're gonna leave this off because that's gonna be extremely distracting and that's why we have headsets on. But if this is installed in the back of a theater, 
sometimes they're going to want this on so somebody in a green room or something like that can hear those calls. All right, looking at the back of this main station now, this is a little more in depth, so I'm going to break this down. First, we're going to start with channel A. I have 701 series, and these guys can just support a single channel. If you have a 702, that could support channel A and channel B, and again, you're going to need that TWC combiner in order to get those two channels in a ClearCom system. RTS products carry duplex audio on two pins by default, so you don't need that TWC combiner. I'll still take a ClearCom product any day over an RTS one. Looking at intercom channel A, you're going to see we have three outputs here. Now, again, before I hook up anything here, I like to have this unit off because as soon as I hook this up, remember 27 to 29 volts like we discussed earlier. Now, that's not too high a voltage, but again, anything that draws current, I like to have it off before I plug it in. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a simple daisy chain mode. We're going to take XLR cables. I'm going to plug this into the first pack in line. I'm going to take the next one, come out of the back, and that's going to go to the next pack in line, and so forth. Now, things to consider when doing this. Now I can turn this on. And you should see there's a nice light there. There's a nice light there. Now, things to consider. You want to estimate your total cable length among all belt packs in line, and you want to keep that under 500 feet. You also want to keep channel A to under 20 belt packs. This total station can power up to 40 belt packs, but that's 20 on channel A and 20 on channel B. You may also be wondering, how come there's three ports for channel A and three for B? Well, that's a couple reasons. In daisy chain configuration, like I'm showing you here, maybe you want to send belt packs to three different places, and since you're daisy chaining them, they may not, that may not be the easiest thing to do. So you can have one line of five packs going to front of house, one line to five packs going to back of house, and one line of packs going to a studio or a green room or something else, right? Now, most commonly, you're going to see one or two lines getting sent out and being utilized for whatever they need to be. And the one that's open, we're going to use this port for other ClearCom products, right? If I want to uh, tie this together with a FreeSpeak kit or a HelixNet kit, I'm going to use this open port to go into another two-wire port of another system and now those two systems can communicate with each other. Porting is, is super easy. And the same thing for B. Again, you need the TWC to get them both down the line, but really I just wanted you to see daisy chain configuration, keep your cable under 500 feet, keep your belt packs to less than 10 per line, less than 20 per channel, and you're gonna be just fine. Another cool thing with two wire systems is the ability to use Splitters. This can be a split six. This can be a simple Y cable. Uh, for this, I'm going to show you this. So I've showed you the, uh, the easy way to kind of do daisy chains out of the ports. We're going to do the same thing, except now these two are still daisy chained, but I'm going to come out of a split six, and I'm going to grab another XLR cable. I'm going to hook this up to the main station here. We are going to go that guy into our split six. And now, rather than daisy chain, I can go straight out my split six here to individual packs, or these could still be ran in series. Really cool. So when I do it this way, if uh, this is typically done in sports with boom operators and like a kind of an interview room or something like that where there's a boom op carrying one of these and he may have a utility behind him paging his cable but this way this gentleman isn't tied to him and if he tugs on this cable it's not going to affect him 
This also lets you send to multiple dis destinations if you need more than three lines. So again, keep your total cable counts under 500 feet, keep your total packs under 20 per channel, and you should be fine. Like we were discussing earlier, now I want you to see if we do a little bit of zooming here. That program input, like I told you earlier, and that announce output. So if I press announce on the front, and I have the headset attached to this base station, my voice is gonna be sent out line level from this announce out. And if I want myself attached to the base station or other people down the line to listen to program, I can attach that here, line level input. Cool. So another thing to consider is the termination switches here and here. Directly from from Clearcom, the fundamental concept of Clearcom party line intercoms is that all channels are terminated in one location, preferably at the main station or power supply. Now, let's note, all intercom lines must be terminated, but care must be taken not to double terminate a line. All, used, all unused intercom lines must also be terminated. So, if I'm doing things like linking base stations and different systems, things like that, this is my only main station that I'm using. I'm gonna make sure that the terminate is on. Okay, let's dive into some of the more advanced features. Now, honestly, you're probably not gonna use most of this stuff. You might use these dip switches here, but we'll start with the relay out. On main and remote stations with an announce button, a dry set of relay contacts is provided through a quarter inch jack or screw terminal on the rear panel. These contacts can activate an external device such as a PA amplifier to another room. The contacts are rated for two amps at 24 VDC. That's volts direct current. If screw terminals are provided on the main station, their connections are labeled NC, C, and NO. NC is normally closed contact, C is the common, and O is normally open contact. Again, you're probably never gonna use that. Time for refreshment. During the next 10 minutes, you're invited to... Just kidding. So, next to that, we have the Clearcom hot mic IFB system there. More or less, if you're using a Clearcom IFB system, you could patch it in there, quarter inch, where the ring is going to be the external IFB control, your tip is going to be your hot mic audio output, and the sleeve is going to be your ground shield. I rarely use that because I run IFBs out of my console, but if you're doing a Clearcom IFB system, you could certainly do it that way too. Lastly on here, we got some dip switches. By default, these are all off, but we can have channel A be always momentary so nobody can accidentally latch that on. Same with B, uh, call on, on talk A, call on talk B. If, if we don't have anything running down there, we don't want to use like our, our call buttons, we can reassign those call buttons. And we, have, we can have interrupt announce, so that way when I hit the announce on the back, which runs through our stage announce here, that will interrupt the program audio. And then we also have long line A, long line B, and these are, you're running long lines, you want to anticipate impedance and counter that, you can flip those switches there. Okay, I want to give you a couple quick and let me, I'll start at the back. I just wanted to give you guys a couple, man, if this happens, how do I fix it? So I'm going to start with acoustic feedback. That's, you start talking and you get this crazy like echo effect in there. Now it may be, let me, terminated. You may not have termination at one line. That can very well happen. And then you also, if we flip this around here, your side tones right here, side tone null, this guy may not be adjusted right. If somebody's side tone's too hot, when they talk, their voice is then exiting the uh, earmuff and returning back into the microphone and then thus creating a feedback loop, which will annoy the hell out of everybody. There's excessive crosstalk where you could have a high DC resistance in ground return. Use a better cable, more or less, for that. Program sounds distorted or overloaded. That's because you're sending way too hot of a signal. Turn it down from the console or whatever you're sending it from. 
more or less, your, your biggest headaches with this are going to be the termination I showed you on the back and the side tone. That's going to solve most of your problems. And then, of course, remote kill if somebody just keeps latching their thing. That's about it for two-channel basics here with ClearCom stuff. Remember to like and subscribe. Voltage, yeah!